What is up, players? It is War Boss Tay up in this mug. Welcome to my showcase video for the Soviet PSI Starter Force for the AE World War II game. And uh, there are seven models in this Starter Force, this uh, army, and I'm going to be showing them off to you. We're going to take a look first at these three monkeys. Look at them, they are so funny. I don't know why I think they are so funny. They are uh, such a joy to paint. If you want something weird and different, I can't think of anything weirder than three monkeys dressed up in Soviet uniforms with little Soviet hats and um, running and uh, jumping and, and hopping up and down. So uh, I, I used Vallejo colors for this commission and uh, my client was lucky enough to provide, or was good enough, I was lucky enough to get it, my client was good enough to provide me a color guide with uh, notes from the studio on how to use Vallejo colors to paint the base coats, the shades, and the highlights. So I used their uh, Russian uniform, World War II. I used, uh, I think it was olive, olive green or olive drab, and then the highlight was green-gray. Or gray green. Gosh, I can't remember off the top of my head. There's so many colors. But uh, using those three colors, I was able to get some really, really nice shading and highlighting effects on my three monkey dudes. And for the skin, I actually use Games Workshop's colors of Dryad Bark for the base coat and then shaded with um, Agrax Earthshade and brought back up with Dryad Bark. And then I added a little bit of Carrick Stone to do the features. I want to show off this little monkey dude because he's a little bit different. He's got teeth, which I painted in with, I think it was um, Vallejo's deck tan. And his lips were done with Bugman's glow. And then uh, his eyes, all of their eyes were done with Mephiston red. And then adding a little dot of Evil Sun Scarlet and finally Irio Yellow to create this very cool looking glow. Their shoulder lapels were, or their, gosh, what do, you, what do you call those little shoulder flaps on uniforms where you put your rank or uh, you button up on your shirts? I should remember this. I took JROTC for four years when I was in high school. Gosh, I don't remember. But I painted them blue, Cantor blue, and then I did little red uniform rankings marks on it with Mephiston red. It creates a very cool effect. Like this guy has two red slashes on either side. I think the other guys have one vertical slash down the center. Uh, very fun to paint. Very, very, uh, I guess, rewarding, I think, for me. I'll, yeah, I'll say rewarding. I thought it was fun to, to give them, give the little monkey dudes ranks. Here's the PSI officer. He's using his psychic brain powers to do some some cool things on the battlefield armed with a pistol and whatever this metal thing is clamped to his head it's kind of like a face hugger it's got little legs going down either side I'm not sure if you could see it and so I just painted that in lead belcher I wanted that to be the brightest most eye-catching thing on him so I painted that in rune fang steel as a highlight the black coat was highlighted with Dark Reaper and then Rust Gray, so that creates a very nice looking dark blue highlights to the black. Makes it look very, very rich and very cool. The skin was painted using Vallejo colors as well. I think it was rose, rose brown or rose flesh or something and then highlighted with medium flesh tone and uh, dark flesh. The Beard or five o'clock shadow was done just watering down some of games workshops Dawnstone, Glazing that on in two or three coats and then if, uh, if if it gets too dark if it looks like Bluto from the old Popeye cartoon Just take some of your skin color and water that down and then glaze that over your beard and it'll create a very cool effect I think it's one of the one of the coolest things I've I've learned to paint is these uh, five o'clock shadows the last three guys I want to take a look at are the Soviet Guard, and those are the guys with the rifles, and the Commissar figure in the center. So <laughs> not much to say about the Soviet Guard. All of these models are painted at a War Master standard, and usually for Games Workshop things that means like freehand details, writing, decal work. For these, which are a little bit more simpler, I had to really refine my War Master standard and make it appropriate to the models. And I think I did that by really blending and uh, 
bringing together the colors in such a way that made these models look like they were really just pulled out of a photograph and put into three dimensions. And I'm very happy with my War Master work on these guys. This fellow on the left, I gave him a Freddie Mercury big bushy mustache because, hey, they're, they're Soviets, why not? And uh, this guy in the center, very happy with how he came out. He's got a book, so I thought, oh, good, I'll do freehand for the cover of the book. And uh, the the test model or the the studio version of the model has like some faux Russian writing on the cover and then a little star at the bottom. So I thought that's perfect. I will recreate that. A lot harder than it looks to paint a tiny little freehand star, but I was able to do it. And uh, let me tell you the colors that I use. For the book, I, it was basically corn red and uh, shaded and highlighted using Agrax Earthshade and, and corn red also. But for the book writing on the cover, that's Ungor Flesh, which I think I've mentioned before is a beautiful mustard yellow, very muted color. Perfect for giving you a realistic yellow. If you don't want bright, vibrant, neon, colorful, like Eldar out of this world, comic book kind of colors, then um, definitely think about using Ungor Flesh. I hear Dookie snuffling around out there in my chairs being very squeaky, so let's wrap this video up, shall we? For this, the star, it's, um, I thought, well, I'll describe how I painted on a star for, for the book. It's a lot harder to, to, I guess, describe it or to think of a way to describe painting on a figure like a star. When you have your paintbrush tip very, very uh, finely, I guess, kind of cleaned up using water and you, you make your brush tip nice and straight and sharp, you can make the first the vertical slash uh, the easiest. Take some of your Ungor flesh and then do a vertical slash from top to bottom and then kind of do like a cross. So make like a T, a lowercase T. And then from the center of the T, just bring out the two bottoms and then take your, all you have to do after that is take your corn red, clean up by taking off the bottom of the T so that all you have is the star shape and then you can just fill it out from there. I guess it's not that hard to describe. It was a lot harder to conceptualize how I was going to describe that than it actually was. Okay, so last thing I want to do, bring my Space Marine here next to him to show off how big the model is in comparison. And again, these are realistically scaled miniatures to look like actual human beings and um, not uh, heroically scaled like my Space Marine there. So if you have any questions, I would love to answer them. These are fun models to paint, really weird like I said, and uh, interesting, and I'm really glad I got to do it. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to contract my studio to paint something for you, please contact me at warbostastudios at gmail.com or just send me an, uh, a message in my inbox on YouTube. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter where I post up a bunch of pictures from everything I'm doing. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next one.